reinventing your home with light was a subject we came up with thinking of this year of lockdown and being a very odd year, it suddenly gave you time to contemplate how you'd like to redesign your home or in fact, how you'd like to live. And so what we've chosen are several projects, some which are just the lighting being renovated and some are a total renovation. So I just thought it'd be great fun to talk you through them, the challenges we had, and also some of the ideas we came up with. And I hope it'd be inspirational, not only in lighting, but also in interior design as well. So let me share these with you. So the first project is, when, which we're renovating rather than relocating, is actually working with Sophie Patterson, a well-known interior designer. It was her own home we were luckier to come into. And she realized the lighting wasn't quite right. The finishes didn't look quite as she'd imagined. And so we had this wonderful job of helping her relight her home. And I've got some pictures that are before and after. So this is before and this is after. She actually changed some of the covered fronts, but just introducing that up light meant we didn't need so many down lights. And if you go back to the previous one, you can see the light sources are very much more visible. They're quite glaring. They're quite green on the cupboards and there's no real ambience. You go to the next one, suddenly she said, it gave her so much more the feeling of height by bouncing the light off the top of the cupboards, which is one in our new design. And it just made the ceiling seem much higher and brighter during the day. Also the light quality on the finishes just made them look more special. The focus on the island, and then we don't like the floor in between and everything had more purpose. But the sad thing, I wasn't able to do because the floor remained the same. So we were able to do most things in the ceiling. But sometimes when you're doing, when you're keeping everything the same, you can't do everything. And we couldn't get under the floor to light those chairs under the kitchen and island. So I thought I'd show you in another project how we did it. Do you see no light and now light? And we'll go back again. Do you see what a difference it makes by lighting those chairs? And if we could have done that on the island, it would have been perfect. But sometimes you, have to, you can't do everything. If we go back to Sophie's house and we look at the, the kitchen, <laughs> the other way around, you can see again that island. It's a pity we couldn't light it. But here is before. And you can see the random arrangement of lights. They're quite glaring in the ceiling, very noticeable, green on the cupboards. And there's a focus on the shelves, but no real focus. And if we go to the next slide, do you see what a difference the atmosphere has made? Those horses are now properly spotlit. You hardly notice the number of down lights in the ceiling. We've used square doubles over the kitchen, rectangular island as we felt that created better task light and more focus. And then the other lights seemed to disappear in the ceiling. And then we were able to integrate into the shelving some lighting. That was one place where we did have to go into the wall to create that difference. But it made such a difference on those shelves. So if you go back to the previous slide of the kitchen, do you see those horses you weren't so focused on? And now we go forward again. And now if we take a close up. Do you see that there's a bit of a mess? There is no real focus. The lights are a bit everywhere. But by redesigning them, do you see the mood totally changed? And it creates what is so important to us lighting designers is creating that balance of layers of light. We've got the picture properly lit on the left. We've got integrated lighting into the shelves that focus on the horses. And then you just get that ambience from that chandelier, the pendant over the dining table. It makes so much difference. But shelving is a very important thing. And to me, it can do it all. Here we've got two 20th century armchairs in front of a TV. The shelves are not lit, they're lit from the front, but nothing else. But it actually, one really does want to have more 
interest. So by lighting the shelves, do you see the difference it's made? It's suddenly, you see the backlight and it gives you that layer of light. It's almost like introducing lamps into the room. Well, I, if you notice how it's been done here, do you see there's a small upstand at the back of the shelf? So the light was literally put behind this to give this soft up light, catch the shelf underneath and put the objects into silhouette and pick up the back finish. And how easy is it for someone to integrate power to something like a bookshelf? Well, I think if you go to my next slide, this was one that I actually worked on on a project in Milan where they had this existing bookcase and we, there was no lighting to it. So the bookcase was embedded in the wall. We ha did have to go through the side of the wall. So there was a chase there before it was repainted. And we added an upstand and a downstand to get an up and down light that grazed up the back finish, but it made so much difference. And in this situation, because it wasn't shiny directly and just grazed up it, it was a very polished background that there was no reflection and actually the shelves were matte. So you see the reflected light is rather soft on the uplit timber shelves. And for a bit of fun, this was a project we worked on in a hotel in Marylebone. And I love the fact that the shelves are eccentric with the backlight. And in this situation, there is two small downlighters giving a soft wash to the front of the books, but you get the depth of the bookcase by the backlight. And then what's rather nice in contrast to that, you get the wall light on the right-hand side, but this narrow focus of light on those fabulous marble tables. And it's the layering of all these effects that make up the mood and create the interest. Back to Sophie's living room. And this was the before picture. You see the arrangement of down lights, they're glaring. There's no focus. It's got fabulous finishes, but somehow the mood is lacking. So we took exactly what we had and we transformed it with light. Do you see how different it is? Suddenly you feel drawn to the fireplace. You want to be sitting around that coffee table with a focus now on the flowers. The lamps now give you the warmth that lights the ends and enab enables you to read at the end of the coffee table. And we've caught the blinds and we've caught just above the fireplace, the vases. So if you look back what we had, and what we transform to create mood. It was such fun working together with Sophie to make these changes and just explain what lighting could do. And luckily as a result, we've worked on lots more projects together. I'd like to also um, think about the fireplace, because one aspect that I didn't manage to achieve there was highlighting the fireplace, because again, the floor wasn't changed. And if one could have done, uplighting the fireplace can give you an interesting new architectural component, whether it's a plug-in or ideally recessed into the floor to just pick up the architectural elements of the fireplace. And the staircase, you also saw our cover shot, and, but this was before. And you can see the two lights either side wouldn't even hit the flowers, they were glaring, and the back of the stairs was in shadow. So by transforming it, we moved the lights to light the flowers. Suddenly they could be focused on with a 10 degree beam. And there was this extra lift and sense of depth and drama by using a continuous LED in the gap between the edge of the staircase and the wall. And now you really felt it float off the wall and it picked up the architecture of the staircase. I love looking at these before and after because they really show what can be done to achieve almost the impossible. 